nuclear bunker lit. living and now a year in review let's go with this right now we had the control dome I mean you know the metamorphosis you know from the, the original uh, floor layer with all these um, uh, wall paneling what have you too and a lot of piping I mean we had to spend so much time over here but now we have a full 360 degree view over here And with the continual draining and filtering of water, utilizing our sump pumps in silo number three, the propellant terminal and the equipment building, finally, now finally, we can explore the propellant terminal and the lower levels of the equipment building. And pretty soon, we're gonna be exploring the lower level of silo three in launch area number three. This is getting really exciting now. And we had good friends Pete and Alex join me on some explorations of the propellant terminal as well as the lower levels of the equipment building. And let me tell you, it felt like a shipwreck. Very, very, very surreal. Wow. I didn't realize there was a floor right there. Yeah. yeah. What's going on? Okay, Connection right there. Oh, wow, that's nice. Yeah. And push it up. What did you tell that bar there? Oh, okay. Oh, oh. 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 Gentlemen, this is exploration. Yeah, sure is. Ooh. Okay, now we're going to break into this. So, you don't think the chamber's intact? No. You think it's all been just... I think they took it all off. Yeah.
now with the claustrophobic crawl through <laughs> this collapsed tunnel into the instrument silo. For the first time, we had a great perspective of how it looks from the interior, that is. And let me tell you, <laughs> I mean, it was collapsing, rusted. I mean, it was a very, very tough time digging through that crawl space over here and being roped up and being dragged out over here. But um, let me tell you, I'm not going to do that again. the legs, tighten up. Got a bit of a depression over here. I may get the GoPro snagged on a, the corrugated iron. Okay, has that just ripped? Exploring the Atlas Surf, the mighty, mighty Atlas Surf and whatever too. But very, very exciting. I mean, you know, with big plans, big grand plans there. With Bruce, I mean, we are going to really transform the Atlas Surf. And it'll be the first Atlas Surf hybrid tied to the one complex, the Safeguard complex. Very, very, very exciting. It doesn't have a head controls, but it's in fairly good shape. Put a bit of dent here. Got the old rotary here, the dial. Oh, That's a perfect desk space, isn't it? Oh, it nice. So you got two other blast doors, and these are very simple. These blast doors over here weren't the other Titan one yesterday, right? So yep. These blast doors are very, very um, almost identical to the antenna solos at a Titan one. Yes, right. I see them. Very similar. The actual design. You see the other curve on one side, and look at this. The active switch here for the entrance. Okay, that's how you do a Hawaiian luau. No, but it's pretty nice, but it is, Bruce. A lot of plastic down here. See the plastic? Man, looking at a Titan one, and now looking at this, this is prime real estate. This is like amazing infrastructure to embellish upon. It's a, it's a novelty to see no water down here. <laughs> Trust me. I, know. I mean, I'm expecting to see, okay, where, where, where can we put RMS Titan here, the uh, our inflatable raft? 
Today we are in another Titan. As you can see here, uh, all the floor beams, there is no great well, for me to basically walk here, so I'm going to just uh, comedy myself back to that side here now. But this particular Titan one was a biological cesspool. I mean, absolute decay, dilapidated. I mean, everything, everything has been compromised. And you're thinking, where is the flooring gone? The propeller terminal is this way. L1, solo, and the green building is directly behind me. And with this hole, you literally need a raft to get to the other side. Attempting to uh, climb up in one of the silos to get to the actual catwalk over here. And we had the raft and whatever too, and eventually we. Um, we lost a raft too, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, it was good to get out of this cesspool. Oh! Oh! <laughs> See the marks? <laughs> Are you seeing this? So all we need to do now is actually determine which piping we want to use. We're pretty much still at the entrance. Much of the piping has been removed in the middle and I think that was pretty much to prevent people from getting to the top of the catwalk. But you can see here, look, there's nothing there. You good, dude. <laughs> Do you have size 10, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go and check in the back. Oh, fuck. Shit. So, what are my options? Should I go right? Or should I go left? This pipe in here is not going to harm my weight. I'm 180 pounds. I get to this here, but I've got a hate back there. Made it to at least three quarters of the way of the catwalk, but there was just a lot of the other trussing and the beams that were being that were scrapped back in the late 1960s to prevent people like us doing this. But anyway, uh, compelling footage, a lot of fun. Right now. We're going to head to another Titan and we're going to make it to the top of the catwalk. And finally, finally, we made it up the catwalk. I mean, this gauntlet, we had to like navigate all the pipes and make it to the top of the catwalk. And this is actually in silo one, I do believe. But um, damn, it felt good. It felt really good to finally make it to the top and present it to the entire community in relation to what the catwalk looks like for the very first time on YouTube, that is. Oh, dear. Finally! Finally! I can see sections from the actuator here, the springs. Got a whole bunch of tanks here, most likely hydraulically fed. You ready for something? <laughs> At least it wasn't you. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, here we go. How am I going to do this? Uh, me. How am I going to do this? I mean, whether it's just producing drone movies and just taking you on a joy, a thrill-seeking yeah. Disney ride for the Titan 1. In fact, 
Here's the first drone movie we shot. And let me tell you, we are about to begin drone movie number two. And that's going to be even more wild, insane, and really, really crazy. But um, amazing, amazing work here. Check this out. I'm trying to think if there's one more light we can spare for in here. Is there one we can spare from in there? I don't think, I mean, I'd wait. I don't think we need to see much of that back there. For sure, for sure. This is what we got to see. Yeah. And the stairs. We had a truck trip up the stairs too. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll go through the top and then we'll come down the stairs. I think we hop in there right away. You're going to go right? And you're gonna, yep. Then what do you do? You fly so, down the So you're just doing one in and out. And then when you come down here, you spiral through all the different pieces. Yep. And then we'll hop up. So it's probably <coughs> one full orbit around all the pieces down here. And then you hop up and then we'll finish back in there. And your ghost room is the very last one at the very far back. You know what? You know what would be a sick ending is like if, I don't know if that means you guys have to run over there or whatever, but somebody like once it gets in that back room, it looks back at the door and you shut the door. Like that'd be pretty sweet to like you get locked in there. Is your walkie on? Yep. We're just gonna, this is a live one right here, right? Okay. I'm not jumping until I see your flame. So once your flame goes, I'm gonna go. All right, I'm gonna just jump right between where you just shot. As you can see with this particular rehearsal, my flamethrower had malfunctioned. So that take was a bust. We've got to start it all over again from the start. Another powerful deterrent weapon goes off duty for Uncle Sam. The Titans stand ready to bring retaliatory action against any aggressor. Welcome back, it's Nick from Nuclear Bunker League. Today we're going to play. You Thirty feet across, fifty feet high. Good evening, my fellow Americans. A vital element in keeping the peace is our military establishment. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. We now stand ten years past the midpoint of a century that has witnessed four major wars among great nations. Progress toward these noble goals is persistently threatened by the conflict now engulfing the world. Any failure traceable to arrogance would inflict upon us grievous hurt. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Let me tell you, with all the Atlas Seths and the Titan Ones, I mean, 
we redline everything in our lives. You know, we're going to operate with leverage and optimum speed. And honestly, you know, uh, you, you can ask me for new horizons until you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. And we do realize that, you know, life begins at the end of our comfort zones. And look, in relation to the way the, uh, the year has progressed, for example, I mean, the, uh, the injuries, the, uh, the goal, of hurdles and obstacles and what have you. I mean, I've got to share with you my favorite Hunter S. Thompson quote. Life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty and well-deserved body, but rather to skid in broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, wow, fucking wow. Thank you once again for the support of the community. Nuclear Bunker Living, we are coming in hot every week and we have so much more to give, so much more exploration, so much more rehabilitation. Get ready, it's going to be a wild ride. Thank you.